So good every, evening, everyone. Thanks so much for uh, joining us for this free um, on, online Zoom recorded but, you know, um, theory course. So I'm a bit tongue tied at the moment. I'm sure that will improve as we go on. Um, right. So, um, yeah, during lockdown, we're not able to go sailing. So it's a good idea, I think, to get some uh, theory stuff out of the way. And of course, come 3rd of December, we're, we're out sailing again, which is be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to getting so I can meet and uh, see students again. I've been, really been missing that. Um, there was a sheet uh, or slide come up about the one that's on there now, asking everyone to keep their microphones turned off. That's just because, you know, even if you've got quite a quiet house with so many microphones, there can be quite a lot of background noise. So if we can keep them off, that would be great. Um, I would like you to ask questions though, as we go through. So just turn the microphone back on and ask away or use the chat function within Zoom. Um, yeah, so if, if you don't understand something, that's, that's because I haven't explained it well enough. So please, please give me an opportunity to do a better job. Um, right, so let's get started. I'll end this introduction and start the, the uh, real slideshow. Here we go, starting off with um, lesson one. Um, we'll, we'll cover a lot of the, the basic stuff. We'll do some knots. Um, I've got a rope set up. You, you may not have a, a rope ready, but um, we will go over these knots again on the next session. Um, maybe if you could find a, a length of rope somewhere in your house, um, but I'll go over the knots that we've got to do today, which is only three. Um, we're, and like I say, we'll, we'll cover all of the knots each, each session as we build up our, our, a catalog of knots that we know how to do. We'll have a look at how the actually we go sailing and how the boat works. And we'll go over our on-water exercise. And I've got a model and a fan to, to go over that. So we'll, we'll do that. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. It'll be the first time I've used that model, but it looks okay. And we'll, we'll give that a go. Um, yeah, so after this course, uh, we are running the practical sessions. Um, you can book that online. Uh, it's available on our website now. It's $250, I think. And it's on the bigger boat, the MRX, which is uh, a more stable, drier boat than the Elliott 7. Um, and it's, yeah, it's heavily discounted um, at the moment. So I'm not quite sure when those sessions will be. I'm working on... Uh, uh, schedule now so hopefully later this week or beginning of next I should have the schedule all um, worked out um, okay well let's get into the safety stuff so yeah we run a very safe sailing school here at the Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron uh, we haven't had any serious accidents at all I haven't used the first aid kit well that's not necessarily true I've used it three times in the last four years um, twice for bee stings uh, one was a, a child which got stung um, while I was out sailing. Um, I needed uh, um, to treat a bee sting while I was up at Kowow because I, I got stung while I was up there. And the other time I used the first aid kit was um, someone fell over on the dock and needed a plaster. But we haven't actually had any accidents at all while sailing and I'm really keen to keep it that way. Um, sailing can be dangerous, but there's also things you can do to make it a lot safer. And being safety conscious is, is a really good plan. Um, and part of this course is going over what the things that we do to keep things safe. And that's not to put people off sailing. It's to, you know, if we highlight some safety issues there and have a plan to deal with them, then quite often we find those, those things never come up. But you know, being prepared, knowing what the risks are, means that you can solve them before they're a problem. Um, yeah, so things can go wrong, but like I say, if, we, if we've got a plan and we know the plan, then, you know, it doesn't lead to bad outcomes often. Um, so you see on this slide that there's a gentleman holding onto the boom, that, that pole at the end of the bottom of the sail is called a boom. That's probably one of the biggest risks on the boat, getting hit with that boom. So we don't really want to do that. 
it looks like a pretty foul day that they're out sailing. So what are the, the, the safety hazards? Well, the water is a bit of a problem at times, you know, I can't breathe underwater. Um, so I'm gonna wear a life jacket every time I go out sailing. The law in New Zealand is that you have to have life jackets available on boats that are over six meters in length, um, but you don't have to wear them. I tend to think though in an emergency, there's not time to find a life jacket and put it on. So I'd rather have a life jacket on and not need it rather than not wear one and then find I need it. Um, the MOB, that stands for man overboard. Uh, be more PC if that was uh, persons overboard. Um, but unfortunately, POB is actually means persons on board. Um, so that acronym is already used. So um, I like to think um, man overboard is stands for human. Um, and yet, yeah, if that happens, we'll turn around and come and pick you up. And the way not to fall off the boat really is to have a low center of gravity, have your feet quite wide. So you've got quite a wide sort of platform and you're stable on there and you can shift your weight from one leg to the other um, as the boat moves underneath you. Um, but also if you're holding on with one hand, then you're probably not gonna fall off. Um, the help thing, um, that's a posture that you can uh, use when you're in the water to keep heat in your body. It kind of keeps the heat in your, in your main organs. We don't really need to worry about that in Auckland because the water temperature here all, all year round is, is not really a problem. But if you're sailing on the South Island or if you're offshore, then that posture would be a good one to know. Uh, communication, it's really important that everybody on board the boat knows what, you, what you're going to do. You know, if you're going to do a tack or a jibe, and I'll go over what they are later on in this lesson. Um, basically, if you're, if you're turning the boot, the boat and that boom is going to switch sides, then people need to know that. You know, we don't want to surprise them um, and suddenly they're having a duck under the boom. So communicate really well, let your crew know what's happening and keep a 360 degree watch. Um, and that's for other boats and obstacles as well. So, you know, usually the obstacles come from in front, but other boats can come from any direction and uh, we don't want to hit them either. And there are a set of rules um, about that. I think that's covered in lesson two. It was in lesson three, but I think we moved it to lesson uh, two. Um, but so we'll go over the basic uh, rules um, to, to avoid collisions between other vessels. Okay, so moving on. So as well as the boom, which um, in the bottom picture, Annalise is pointing to the boom. As you can see, she's not very tall, so the boom's not really a problem for her. But those other ladies that are on that boat, if they were standing up there, their heads would be quite close to the boom. The other um, device on that top picture is called a winch. And the hand that's pulling on the rope is just too close to the winch. If that hand was a meter away from the winch, it could still pull on the rope, but there would be no chance of any fingers ending up tangled up in that rope on the winch. Um, so yeah, so the ropes, they can be a trip hazard. Um, if you stand on them, they, they can roll and, and trip you over. Um, the winch, you know, we really don't want any fingers in there. Um, when we're using a winch handle, so there's another handle which goes in the top of the winch that we can turn. Um, we want to have a good posture when we're using that. Um, so legs wide apart again, so you know, shoulder width apart and stand over the winch as well, rather than trying to operate it sitting down. Um, and the boom. So, yep, we want to um, duck definitely. So on small boats, on like little dinghies, if the boom hits you, you might have a headache for a little while and a bit of a bruise, but nothing bad really is going to happen. On larger keel boats, like the ones we sail, uh, if the boom hits you, well, you're almost certainly going to be have a concussion or worse. So good communication about when that boom is likely to be moving across the boat and you know, making sure you duck and not get hit with it is really important. We'll, we'll talk more about that later on. Um, and OFA. So if we're sailing in Auckland, in and out of uh, West, West Haven, 
there is a leopard seal which lives here and it's really cool that she lives here she, she tends to eat all the fish and then when there's no fish she'll go to another marina and she'll eat the fish there and then when the stock in in west haven is replenished she'll come back um she's a really big ap animal and we need to respect her really cool if we see her we take some photos and i will sometimes actually try and find her so my students can take photos of her because you know it's not often that we see a leopard seal in auckland she is supposed to be in the antarctic chasing penguins but she chooses to be in auckland um so we'll we'll take photos but apart from that you know if we see her on the dock then we'll avoid disturbing her we're definitely not going to go and poke her with a stick and ask her to move you know um but yeah taking photos from a safe distance is, is cool um yeah okay so the weather um always changing auckland it has quite good weather really for sailing um but when i came up to this room in the yacht squadron it was nice and sunny and now the clouds have come over and it's there's a little bit of rain i think i can see out the window um the weather does change having a look at a good weather forecast is, is pretty key before you go out sailing knowing what the weather's doing now and what it's likely to do all day is is really important for staying safe and being prepared on the boat not just for um clothing to take you know if it's going to rain you're going to want a raincoat um but also the wind strength and the sun as well the sun is something that you know, if we're going to the beach, we take sun cream and, and or sunscreen and are well prepared. On a boat, there's, the sunburn can actually be worse because there's a reflection off the sea. So you kind of get burnt twice, if you like, as the sun comes down from the sky. But then again, as it reflects up off the sea. So we really need to be careful of the sun. Um, yep, yeah, need sunscreen. Staying hydrated is quite important during the middle of the summer. You know, we, we can easily get dehydrated, drinking plenty of water. The MRX has got a toilet on board, so we don't need to uh, worry about taking on more water than we need. We, there is a, a bathroom or a head that we call on, on the boat that you can use. Um, getting cold and wet, yeah, we make bad decisions when we're cold. So making sure we've checked the weather forecast and we're well prepared with our clothing is, is a really good plan. Quite often, even just a light rain jacket is enough because that will be windproof and it's generally the wind that makes us cold. Um, and keeping your inner layers dry is, is quite a good idea too. Um, strong winds. So we have a wind limit of 25 knots and we shouldn't be out on the water if the wind is more than that. Um, Zero to five knots you see on that um, grid at the bottom there, it's quite hard to sail in because it's difficult to tell where the wind's coming from. Five to 15 knots is kind of everyone's favorite wind range because there's the wind is easy to feel. You can feel it on your face. Um, there's a definite sensation of speed and, and it's quite fun, but easy sailing. 15 to 25, well, it's getting a little bit more exciting. There's more speed, more acceleration. And as we get towards 25 knots, we're going to need to depower the boat. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how we do that later on in a further lesson. Um, and over 25 knots, really, it starts getting quite difficult again. And that should only be for experienced sailors. Um, I, I'm not too happy with having a wind limit of 25 knots because I actually feel that for our students, it would be better for them to experience, you know, 35 knots with a coach on board that knows what to do. Um, but from our health and safety point of view, the club doesn't really want me to take people out in more than 25 knots. Um, but yeah, I think that would be useful, I think, to have someone that knows what they're doing when you experience those higher wind conditions for the first time. Um, but the stuff we can teach you in the lower wind conditions can help you know if you remember those yeah. um, and basically you just do more of that as the wind picks up um, if anyone wants to know what a knot is well one knot is 1.852 kilometers per hour um, i just really round that up to two so one knot would be 
two kilometers an hour. That's the easiest way, you know, I can do that in my head. Multiplying by 1.852 is a bit more tricky. Um, okay, moving on. And yeah, okay. So there's a picture of a cool boat. Um, I see the Team New Zealand have rolled that out the shed. They must need the space. So I think it's currently up for sale. If anyone wants a, a second-hand race boat for the next America's Cup, um, that one is available, I believe. Um, knots. Okay, so I'm all set up to show you how to tie a knot. If you've got a piece of rope handy, go and grab that. The first knot we're going to do is the um, figure of eight knot. And uh, basically we um, use that to stop the ropes can, un, uh, you know, if we rig the boat up and thread the ropes through different pulleys, we don't want that to get unthreaded while we're sailing. You know, if the rope is loose and it gets pulled through a pulley, then it can be quite difficult to thread that back up again while we're sailing. So we use a stop or not to stop that from happening. And the first one. So, okay, let's have a look at the um, figure of eight knot. So if we make an alien shape and then strangle the alien a little bit, poke him in the eye, and we pull that tight, we should end up with a knot that kind of looks like an eight. So let's go over that again. So we make like the alien head shape, a little bit of a strangle, poke him in the eye, and pull that tight. There we go, that's the figure of eight stopper knot. And we just use that to stop the rope getting pulled through a pulley so that we can pull, you know, if the sail's flapping or whatever and we let go of the rope, then the knot will go to the pulley and stop. And if we've got a bit of a tail, then we can hold on to that and pull the rope back. Okay. so. The other stopper knot that we use is called the double overhand stopper knot. And we simply we cross that over as if we're doing up our shoes. Go around again in the same direction and pull that tight. And we'll end up with a knot that's a bit squarer than the figure of eight knot. Let's show you that again. So I'm going to cross it over. First stage doing up the shoes, round again, pull it tight. And the nice thing about this is that it, because it's squarer, if there's a thin rope through a quite a large diameter pulley, this one will be more likely to stop. And the other thing is when it pulls really tight, these bits that go across to get the rope undone. We just need to separate them and that will get some slack in the rope. So double overhand stopper knot, exactly the same use as the figure of eight. I tend to prefer this one because um, it's a bit more chunky and won't go through a pulley quite so well or what, not, not as easily. Um, it's fairly easy and quick to tie. The figure of eight, Stop a knot is a little bit thinner, a little bit slimmer, so that can wiggle through. And it actually gets smaller as it gets tighter. So when there's a lot of load on the knot, it gets smaller and that can help it kind of wiggle through. So I, I tend to prefer the um, double overhand stop a knot. just because it's a bit more chunky and it's going to be a bit more reliable. Okay, so there's the two stopper knots, figure of eight and the double overhand. So the next knot we're going to do is the king of all knots, the, the, the bowline, or bowline sometimes it's pronounced. And the purpose of this is to create a loop that won't change diameter. So if we wrap the rope around something, that becomes the loop that we're going to form. And there's going to be another loop, which is going to be part of the knot. So if I put my finger out on the shorter rope, 
wrap the longer one around my finger. That will create a loop which crosses over underneath. And then I can take the rabbit. So the rabbit lives underground, comes up out of his hole, goes around the tree, and then goes back down the hole. When I pull that tight, I should get a knot that looks a bit like a life jacket. And this loop here, doesn't matter how hard I pull on it, that won't change diameter. So I can use this knot to tie onto the sails to pull them up the mast. I could use it for docking if I wanted to, tie it around a post or something. I can also use it uh, to retrieve someone that's fallen in the water. So if we've got a man overboard situation, I tie a bowline with a big loop and I can throw that to the person. They can put that over their shoulders and I can pull them back on board without hurting them because the rope's going to stay, that loop is going to stay the same size. So let's go over that again. So I wrap it around to make the loop, put my finger out, wrap the long rope around my finger. That crosses underneath. If it crosses over the on top, the knot won't work. So it has to be underneath. And that's one of the most common mistakes people make. The other mistake is that the rabbit lives underground. So he has to come up out of his hole. If he goes down the hole, the knot won't work. So come from underneath and up around the back of the tree, and back down the hole the same way he came out. And then there's the, the bowline. And you can use that for a lot of stuff. You could even use it as a stopper knot if you want. You know, that knot won't go through a pulley. And we've got a loop for a handle to pull on. It's a really versatile knot. And if you can only tie one knot, make sure it's this one, because you can use it for pretty much everything. Okay, well, that's the last knot. Don't worry if you haven't got that yet. Sometimes it can take a little while to get hang of the bowlin, um, but we'll practice these knots each session. And by the end of the third lesson, we'll be getting quite good at that. Okay, let's, let's, let's move on. And um, how we use the controls and how we actually go sailing. So, yeah, the wind is everything in sailing. So, we use it to power the boat, make it go forward. We use it to make the boat stop. And we need to be aware of the wind at all times, both in its direction and in its strength. Now, in our normal everyday life, if, say, we're leaving our house in the morning and we're going to walk to our car and drive to work, it makes no difference which way the wind's blowing or how strong the wind is, unless it's extreme. Um, so we don't tend to pay much attention. So for homework, maybe tomorrow, if you're out for a walk or something, just try and notice where the wind's coming from. You can feel it on your face. Maybe one cheek is cooler than the other. And just try and turn your head so the wind is blowing straight in your face and both cheeks are the same temperature. And maybe then try and turn around and do the same thing with your neck and your ears. Just try and position yourself with the wind behind you and the wind in front, and maybe the wind on the side as well. Because I know it sounds like a simple thing, but learning to be aware of the wind at all times will help you um, with your sailing. Because um, knowing where the wind is, is everything. And it does change constantly. So we'll go over some boat vocabulary first, and this will help you understand some of the things I'm talking about. So that uh, big sail, um, with the number four on it, that's called our mainsail. Uh, so it's behind the mast and we've got the boom at the bottom of it. The sail at the front, uh, head sail is kind of like a generic term for the sail forward of the mast. Um, small ones tend to be called jibs and larger ones that tend to be called genoas, but head sail is a generic term. So if you say, jib 
Genoa or Head Sail. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but technically a jib is a small head sail. So the one that you can see there, that is a jib because it only goes to the mast. A Genoa would overlap the mast and come I know, back to the where the people are sitting on the boat. But head sail is a good term to use. Um, the big pole in the middle, that's the mast. And then the pole at the bottom of the sail, that's the boom. The front of the boat is called the bow and the back of the boat is called the stern. And we couldn't get an arrow for the tiller um, because it kind of messed up the picture. But the, um, the guy that's standing up on the boat by the end of Harkin, he's got like green shorts on. Um, so he's holding the tiller extension and that's uh, just a metal or carbon fiber rod that goes down to the um, tiller, which is actually down by his knee. And that actually controls our rudder. And that's how we steer the boat. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how we're gonna make the boat go, how we're gonna make it stop. Something called points of sail and tacking and jibing, which is turning the boat. So let's have a look at how we get the boat to power up. So have a look at those pictures and have a think about where the sails are going to be, which side of the boat is the sail going to be. So we've got the wind coming down from the top of the board, top of the screen, and that's actually going to blow the sails to the opposite side of the boat. So the sails would normally be on the opposite side of the boat to where the wind's coming from. So on uh, the top picture, we've got the wind coming down, hitting the left-hand side of the boat. And the sails are on the right-hand side. The other boat on the bottom of the screen, the wind is coming across the right-hand side and the sails are on the left-hand side of the boat. So, Generally speaking, the sails are always going to be on the opposite side of the boat to where the wind is. And they're simply just going to get blown to that side of the boat. So on this next slide, we're going to look at how we stop the boat. And if we point the boat into wind, so we've got the wind coming down from the top of the screen again. And we can see that boat in the middle of the, the, um, those three boats. The wind is touching the bow first and the sails are just flapping like flags. And if they're flapping, then they're not gonna be generating any, uh, any forward motion at all. They're not generating any power and we'll slow down and stop. We don't have any brakes on the boat and that's the only way we're gonna be able to stop. So to turn the boat into wind, so the wind is blowing in our face and hitting the bow first, and then our sails will flap and we'll slow down and stop. If we're at a slight angle to the wind, like the other two boats, we can still slow down and stop by easing the ropes and letting the sails flap. And we won't stop quite so quick, but we will stop eventually. Um, the no-go zone is this red area. So anywhere in that triangle, we're not gonna be able to sail. Our sails are gonna be flapping and we're gonna be slowing down. But we can sail on the edge of that no-go zone. And basically, you know, we don't know where that no-go zone is. It, those lines aren't painted on the sea for us. Um, but we can find it with the sails. So if we've got the sails set where we want them to be, if we turn towards the wind at the point that they start flapping, well, that's the edge of the no-go zone. So looking at points of sail. So this is the different directions that we can sail in. And sailing across the wind is, is called a reach or reaching. So this, this boat here is reaching, it's sailing across the wind. The wind is coming down from the top of the screen again. And if 
we want to turn the boat towards where the wind is coming from. That's sailing upwind. It's not straight into wind because as we just talked about, if we go straight into wind, our sails will flap. But if we pull the sails in as close as they'll come to us and sail at an angle where they're not flapping, then we'll be sailing upwind. And we can also sail downwind. And to sail downwind, we want to ease the sails out. So this picture is giving us uh, three directions and three sail positions. So when we're sailing upwind, say so that's like position one, if you like, with the sails as close to us and we, as we can get them. If we turn away from the wind and we're reaching, then we can have the sails kind of halfway out. And if we're sailing downwind, we need to let the sails all the way out. So sailing is pretty easy, really. There's only three things to remember, three sail positions and three directions to go in. Of course, we can go in the opposite direction as well, but that's just more of the same thing. And that's sailing, basically. So um, well done, you passed level one. I think we should wrap up now. And I'm only joking, of course, there's, there's a bit more to learn yet, but fundamentally, that's it. There's no more to sailing than that. Three sailing positions, for, or three positions for the sails, and three directions we can go in. We can go upwind, if the sails are in all the way. We can reach, if the sails are halfway out. And we can go downwind, and we'll have the sails all the way out for that. Okay, let's get to the other stuff that I alluded to. Um, so you see this boat, we've had this, just at the beginning, the sails were halfway out, and as they turned Um, two different ways that we can turn. Now, this isn't a tack or a jibe. All we're doing is turning upwind or bearing away and going downwind. The sails have stayed on the same side of the boat. They're still on the, what, the right-hand side, as I look at it. Anyway, hopefully the screen is the same way around for you guys. Um, so, yeah, sails on the right, boat sailing along, turn up towards where the wind's coming from. Sails are still on the right, but they're just closer to us. And we're about to pull on the ropes. And if we turn away from the wind or bear away, then we're going to ease the ropes and let the sails go out a bit. So there's two ways we can turn, two directions. We can go up or we can go down. So you can see how the wind is uh, relevant to everything in terms of giving directions. If we're going to tell our crew that we're going to head up, then hopefully everybody on the boat knows that we're going to turn towards the left in this case and head more towards where the wind's coming from. Turning left or right that really has no place on a boat because it all depends on the wind direction. If the wind was coming from a different direction, turning left might mean that we were going downwind. So our directions we give are based on where the wind direction is coming from as well. So if we're walking around town, we might say, you know, when you get to the sky tower, you turn left and it's just down there on the right. But we can't do that on the water because, you know, we might not be able to see the sky tower. So we will give directions based on the wind because that's, you know, in a direction. And whether we're getting closer to the wind or further away from the wind is really important because we need to adjust the sails. So defining, you know, saying that we, we're going to head up gives everybody the direction we're going in, but also an instruction to pull the sails in. Okay, now tacking is one of the maneuvers we do where the boom changes side. So here we've got a boat sailing upwind and nicely on the edge of the no-go zone. They might be testing that no-go zone a little bit. They might be steering towards the wind a little bit and making their sails flap and then turning away from the wind and going straight when the um, sails fill and stop flapping. But if we want to sail in 
um, on the other side of that triangle, then we're going to do a tack. So tacking is turning through the wind, and it's the bow of the boat that goes through the wind. So when we're halfway through the tack, we'll be slowing down and our sails will be flapping. Um, it's quite important that we have a little bit of momentum when we go into a tack. If the boat's slow, we can get stuck there. So we want to be going fairly fast and then we want to turn quite smoothly. Sails will flap. The boom will come across quite slowly and it'll be easy to duck because, you know, everybody will know it's coming and it's only going to come really Nothing bad happens. Um, the worst thing that could happen is that we go into it without much speed and we get stuck in that no-go zone. Um, yeah, and the important thing is that when we start, we've got the sails on the right-hand side, and as we tack, the sails are then on the left-hand side when we come out, or vice versa, depending on which way we go. So with jibing, um, that's a little bit different. So we've got the wind behind us on with this boat. And as we're sailing along, when we turn, the head sail, the one at the front, that will get blown through quite early. And as we continue to turn, eventually the main sail, the one with the boom on it, will get blown across. And that will come through very quickly. So basically that mainsail will be on one side of the boat and then suddenly it will be on the other side. So we need to be really cautious about jibing. Um, I will teach a really nice safe way of jibing, which controls the speed of that boom. Um, but that, that's a jibe. So the definition of a jibe is that the stern goes through the wind rather than the bow. And um, we will be doing that on our day out sailing, if you want to do the practical part. Um, so in a little while, we've got a few more slides to show you with how, how to jibe and how to tack. Um, yeah, so there's the definition there, the sail switch side. So there's four types of turn we can do. We can head up, we can bear away. On both of those, the sail doesn't switch sides. We're just trimming the sail or adjusting the position of it. Tacking, the sail will switch sides and we need to duck the boom, but it'll only be going and coming across quite slowly. So that's easy. And then jibing where the boom could be coming across really fast if we don't control the speed of it. And that's the dangerous one. That's the, the time where people get hit with the boom. So yeah, stay tuned and we'll go over how to do that safely. Um, Let's have a bit of a recap with all of the points of sail now. So we've got the wind coming from the top of the screen and we've got that um, no-go zone. So if we're in there, we're going to slow down and stop. And as I said before, that's the only way we're going to be able to stop the boat. Um, we've got reaching, which is like the easiest point of sail. As long as the sails aren't flapping, we'll be moving. Uh, we've got sailing upwind. That's one of the most difficult directions to go in because we're really close to that no-go zone. So we need to concentrate on when we're sailing upwind and we need to have the sails as close to us as we can possibly get them. So sailing upwind and then we've got sailing downwind. And well, sailing downwind happens even if you just stop sailing. So if you let go of the tiller, and stop steering the boat, let go of all the ropes and let the sails flap, well, you're going to get moved down wind. That's, that's just the way the wind is going to push the boat. But if you want to go in a more controlled way downwind, um, sailing with a slight angle to the wind will be slightly faster and be a bit safer as well. So if we've got a slight angle to the wind and maybe the wind is coming over 
the back corner of the boat, well, that boom is going to stay there and we're not going to randomly jibe. Um, if we wander off course, if we're going straight downwind, then we, you know, maybe we will jibe and do what's called a crash jibe when we're not expecting it. So sailing with a bit of an angle to the boat, it's not only faster, but it's also a bit safer and avoids those unfortunate accidents which happen sometimes. Um, so we've got bearing away. So if we're sailing upwind and we turn away from the wind onto a reach, we'd be bearing away and we need to ease the sails out for that to happen. The boat will want to go in the direction that the sail is set for. So if we've got the sails set so they're really close to us in the upwind position, we probably won't be able to bear away in moderate to strong wind conditions because the sails will be more powerful than the rudder. So if we don't ease the sails and put them in the reaching position, we won't be able to bear away. Um, we can bear away some more and then we'll be going downwind. If we're going downwind, we can also turn up closer to the wind and for that we'll be heading up. And if we are on that um, boat at the top that's sailing upwind on the right hand side of the triangle, if we continue toward turning up towards the wind, we'll end up tacking be on the other side. Then we can do the bear away. So we're going downwind. And if we continue to bear away, that's when we're going to be jibing. So there we go. There's all of the directions we can sail in, all of the sail positions that we've got, and all of the maneuvers heading up, bearing away, tack, sails are going to change sides, and jibe sails are going to change sides and we want to be a little bit cautious about jibing and make sure we do that correctly and all of our crew know what's happening. Okay so that's the first loser of the America's Cup. Um, quite a quick boat that one. Um, okay let's have a look at um, uh, tacking and jibing and what we would be about to do out on the water if we were allowed to go sailing and, and what we will be doing uh, in the not too distant future. Um, so for this first exercise, we're just gonna be reaching. And we do that because it's easy. My only instruction with the sails is that we don't want them to be flapping. So we're just gonna pull on the rope enough to stop them from flapping and, and we'll be moving. We may not be going all that fast, but it will be fine for what we want to achieve today or next session. And the main thing we want to achieve on this session is to learn how to sail the boat in a straight line. So we're going to pick something on the shore, like that tree, and we're just going to aim at it. And if we line the bow up with that tree, and then we push the tiller, just observe which way the bow turns, and then pull on the tiller. And again, just see which way the bow turns. And then just try and keep the bow pointing straight at that tree. We'll soon catch on as to how the tiller works. The tiller's not particularly intuitive. Um, a lot of coaches will say things like, you know, you, you, you push it left to turn right. And I, I just think that confuses people. So I think it's much better just to push and just observe which way the bow goes relative to that tree and then pull and see what happens. And then just keep an eye on that tree and just line the bow up and your brain catches on real quick. So obviously, if we're sailing towards that tree, eventually we're going to have to turn. And the first turn that we're going to teach you how to do is a tack, and that's a turn towards the wind. So the wind's coming from the top of the screen, and we're going to say, ready to tack. Hopefully all of our crew are paying attention, and they're going to say yes, or they're going to get busy, ready to move the ropes and things that they need to do. And then we're going to move the tiller, and we're going to turn the tiller so that we turn towards the butt wind. And then the sails will be on the other side. And at that point, in this case, we can aim at the sky tower, drive in a straight line again. You know, like say gently push and pull on the tiller and just observe which way the bow goes, training our brain to be able to use that tiller. And when we get to the 
uh, get near to the shore again. We'll say ready to tack and we'll push the tiller away and we'll do it, turn towards the wind and do another tack. So if you see us, we're sailing towards the tree. We turn left into wind. And as we're turning towards the sky tower, we turn right into the wind. So it's another case for not using left and right on the boat. So if we're going to tack, it's a turn into the wind, and that's always going to be the case. That's the which way we're going to go. So I know the sailing terminology you know, is a little bit to get your head round and a bit to learn, but it conveys quite a lot. So if, we, if you ask the helms person, say, okay, we're going to tack, ready to tack, all of your crew should know that we're going to turn towards the wind and the boom is going to come, ac come across and we're going to adjust the sails on the other side. Okay, let's move on and have a look at the next one. So it's a pretty similar exercise. We're still learning how to drive the boat in a straight line. Um, it sounds really simple, but the boats really don't want to go in a straight line. They'll, they'll just go around in circles all day long if we let them. We need to constantly adjust the tiller to keep them going in a straight line. And knowing whether to push or pull is key because we can make it worse or better depending on whether we do the right thing or not. Um, so it does take a little while sometimes for people to learn how to use the tiller. But this exercise is designed to get everyone using the tiller by the end of this exercise, and, and it's pretty effective. So nice and simple. We'll head towards that tree again. Although actually, sorry, we're going to the sky tower. So we're, we're reaching, not too concerned about the sails as long as they're not flapping. We're heading towards the sky tower and we're pushing and pulling the tiller, observing which way the bow goes. And as we get to the shore, we're gonna do a jibe. So we're gonna say ready to jibe and all of our crew should be alert at that point. That boom could come across quite quickly. In fact, it will do if we leave the sail where it currently is. So what we're actually gonna do is pull the sail in to the corner of the boat. And that will mean that the, the boom goes over our heads a lot slower. It's a lot easier to manage. So we'll say ready to, ready to jibe. Our main sheet trimmer, that's the person controlling where the, the boom is. They'll start pulling on the rope. And when the sail is into the corner of the boat, then the helms person can say, okay, jibing, and we'll do the jibe, we'll turn the boat. We don't need to worry about the head sail. That will look after itself. And if it messes up, well, it's forward of everybody. It's not gonna hurt anyone. Main focus is gonna be on that boom and nobody getting hit with it. After we've done the jibe, we're gonna to have to ease the rope out so it's in the right position. Because if that sail is all the way in, then after the jibe, we're gonna start, the, the main sail is gonna want us to go upwind. So once the boom has passed over our head, we're gonna be easing the sail out so it's in the correct position again for the reach. So sailing along towards the tree, as we get close, so ready to jibe, pull the main sail in, and then we can bear away and do the jibe and head back towards the sky tower. So that's tacking and jibing. And uh, let's move on now to the model that I've got. Um, so yeah, we won't go to lesson two just yet. So I just reposition my camera and Get the model up and I'll go through a tack and a jibe using the model and uh, hopefully that should be a lot clearer. So just bear with me a moment. And So if there's a little bit of background noise now, I've just got a fan creating some wind to blow over this model boat. And uh, the sails are not an awesome shape. The curvature in them is not great, but they, it, doesn't, it works quite well. If I um, turn the boat 
oh, one thing to know is that our wind direction. So I've put an arrow on here, marking the wind direction, and I'm not going to move the fan. I'm just going to rotate the model around on its base. So as I bring the boat, so it points straight into wind, you'll see that the sails just flat and they don't create any power at all. If I turn away from the wind and bear away, the sails are still flat. But if I pull on the ropes, I can get the sails so they stop flapping. So I'm pulling on the main sheet now, the one that controls the boom. There we go. We've got the main sail working now. And I'll pull on the jib sheet. And there we go. Our jib is starting to work now. So this boat now would be moving and sailing along. If I turn up into wind, you see eventually the sails start flapping. So here we go, they're starting to flap now. And if I come straight into wind, they're flapping again. So to sail upwind, I need to sail at a bit of an angle to the wind. And I need to pull my sails all the way in. And if I do that, then I can sail upwind. If I turn a bit too close to the wind, a bit too close to this arrow, the sails start to flap and I'm in the no-go zone. So I'll just bear away a little bit. And there we go. Got some nice powerful sails there. Now if I want to tack, I'm going to turn towards where the wind's coming from. So starting to turn towards the wind, the sails are starting to flat. I've got some momentum, I'll be able to carry on turning. The sails will switch sides, and that all happens fairly slowly. And if I pull the sails in when I get to the other side, and I've completed the tack, then we can sail on the other side of the wind and there's our tack completed. So to initiate the tack, we say ready to tack, and we turn the boat when everyone's ready towards the wind. We don't stop when we head to wind, we keep on turning. We can keep the main sheet on, because that's gonna be the same on the other side. And we just need to adjust the jib sheet. Yeah, and then we're sailing upwind again. So that's a tack. If we're on a reach and our sails are a bit further out, I can still do the tack. So I'll just set my sails correctly. There we go. So here we are, we're sailing along on our reach. Turn into wind. There we go. The sails are starting flapping now and I'm losing power and slowing down. And then we'll come out the other side and we can sail along the other side on that reach. Okay, so that's one of the turns. Let's have a look at heading up. So if I get my sails, so I just stop flapping. It's about as good as I'm gonna get this model to look. Okay. And if I turn a bit closer to the wind, then the sails will start flapping a bit more. So I need to pull my sails in. Yeah. So that's heading up, bearing away, it needs the sails as I turn away from the wind. They start flapping, well I've eased them too much, I just need to pull them in until they stop. And I can keep easing the sails as I bear away until I'm going downwind. And we can have the sails right out like that. So there we go, there's our main sail done. At the moment, the head sail's flapping, and that's because it's in a wind shadow from this main sail. We can pull it through to the other side and let it come out on the other side of the, the mast. And that'll be fairly fast sailing downwind. Let's have a look at how we jibe. So I'm going to put the sails on the one side of the boat. Now, if I do have the boom right out, 
and I do nothing with the boom at all. We'll ignore the head sail for now. So as I turn towards the, away from the wind again, so the stern of the boat is going to go through the wind. I have to turn quite a long way, but eventually we've got the head sail blow through, and now the boom is pretty unstable, and that's going to come through next. And it's a little bit stuck, but let's try that again. So as I turn away, eventually the wind gets the other side, blows the sail across. And then I can reset. So that would be an unsafe way of driving. Let's see if we can do that again. Um, so we turn, we're sailing downwind. We're going to turn the boat, and nothing happens. We can turn quite a lot without the boom changing. But as soon as the wind gets to the other side, if the boom's not stuck, it will flick across. Let's have a look at that again. So try to get the boom so it's not stuck. The fault with this model. So as I turn, yeah, boom, it comes across. So a much safer way to turn the boat when we're jiving would be to be sailing downwind, and then we say ready to jibe. The main sheet trimmer gets busy with the mainsail, pulls the boom in to the corner of the boat. And then when we turn, the boom will switch sides much earlier, and we can just ease the rope out to control the boom. So by sheeting the boom or the mainsail on and bringing the boom closer to us just before the jibe, we can make sure that the, the, the jibe is quite safe and smooth and no one gets hurt. We can control the boom as it comes across. So sailing downwind, ready to jibe, sheet on, keep going straight. There we go. We've got the boom in now. Small turn, boom switches sides, and I can ease the sail out with the rope. So that's the much safer way of jibing. With small boats, you can get away with just doing the jibe and letting the boom do its thing and whiz across because small boats are not particularly powerful. And if it hits you, you know it's not going to be fun, but it um, is not going not to do serious damage. As the boats get bigger, we really need to be controlling the speed of that boom because the boats get a lot more powerful and if it hits you it's it's a significant issue you know you can't stop it from coming across all we can do is control it by using the main so main sheet control that boom if we try and stop it with our hand we'll have a saw hand if we try and use our head to stop it well we might not have a head but if we use the rope to control the boom, we can be a long way away from the boom. We can be already ducked because we, we know the boom's going to come across, so we know we're going to need to duck. So we can be out the way of it and we can make sure that the boom comes across nice and gently and it's not a problem. All right, well, um, Let's just go through those maneuvers again. So we set the boat up on a reach, pull the sails in so they're not flapping. As we head up, we're gonna pull the sails on. If we've got the sails as close to us as they'll come, and then they start flapping like that, then we're in the no-go zone, and we need to turn away from the wind to get our sails full again. As we turn away from the wind, we want to ease the sails. If they're flapping, we'll release them too much. We can turn more and ease them more. 
And then if we continue bearing away, eventually we're going to jibe. So we're going to say ready to jibe, pull the boom in, do the jibe, and ease the sail back out again. And then we can come up on the other side, reaching again, turning up wind, pull the sails on. Yeah. And if we keep turning, then we're going to tack and we're going to need to swap the sails over to the other side. So there we go. We've got tacking with the bow going through the wind. We've got jibing with the stern going through the wind. We've got turning up towards where the wind's coming from and bearing away and turning downwind, turning away from where the wind's coming from. So they're the four maneuvers that we can do and the three sail positions and that all important technique to keeping the jibing safe. You know, if you use this technique of pulling the boom in, and then doing the turn, you can jive in 35 knots without doing any damage to the boat, without hurting anybody. Um, on a big boat, if you do nothing to control the boom, then someone's going to have their head knocked off at some point. Anyway, we'll um, we'll stop with the, mo the model there, and we'll, we'll um, uh, get back to the uh, PowerPoint. actually concludes um, lesson one. So I think lesson two is scheduled for what, the 25th, so a couple of days time. Um, there's a, a quite a lot more information to get into. Um, yep, there's always more to learn with sailing. Um, thanks very much for coming along this evening. I hope you um, found the presentation uh, useful and I look forward to seeing you on the 25th so same time, same place. Um, and yeah, we'll get into the more technical stuff um, on the 25th. And uh, yeah, um, fingers crossed. Well, I think the government's pretty much confirmed now that we, we are going to be going sailing on the 3rd of December. So I will continue working my schedule um, tomorrow and hopefully be able to release some dates when we can actually get out sailing and um, yeah, go and enjoy this beautiful place where we live. All right. Well, thanks very much, everyone. Very much appreciate your um, comments coming through that tonight's presentation is quite clear. Um, yeah, thank you very much for that. I'll, um, I'll see you all on the 25th. Cheers for now. Goodbye. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. All right, cool.